I know that you all could be doing all sorts of things this evening and you have joined us here and I'm super glad. And Mary, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling awesome. I'm so glad we have folks here tonight with us. Yeah. Nice group. Yeah. Season four has begun. Now it's interesting that we're doing this uh, right when everyone's getting a vaccine or many people, I should say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the weather is getting warmer in many parts of the country. Is. which is making it challenging, but we're going to keep doing this and seeing, is there a model here that can work online moving forward? We're going to keep trying. We don't know. We don't know. Well, we won't know until we try, which is what we're doing. So here we are. Yes. And we are going to, excuse me, my mic almost, we are going to draw the first set of names in about seven minutes, which means either whether you're a storyteller or in the audience, uh, maybe you get a beverage right now. Maybe you return that phone call real quick. Maybe you use the bathroom. I'm not going to get into not gonna go detail with what you do. That's your time. But now you come back and we're all ready to go at 10 after. And in that time, the next six or seven minutes, uh, Mary, do we want to ask them to uh, share something with us, these fine, lovely people uh, with them? Maybe perhaps in the chat, like where they are or something that hasn't been asked 10,000 times in the past year? Yeah, but I think part of what we're known for is, you know, chatting where people are from and how global we are. So that's just my opinion. But so Mary is giving me the directive that she wants you to put where you are in the chat. Yeah, where are you from? And this is also the place in which you can communicate uh, while the slam is going on. And then afterwards, we'll, we'll loosen it up and unmute. But during the actual slam, it'll be easier if people stay muted other than uh, the tellers and me and Mary, and and, I, and admittedly, many people wish I were muted. Fair, no. but it's not going to work out. But Mary, where are they from? I'm gonna. Oh. We're multitasking here. Where are these lovely people from? Pennsylvania, Toronto. Uh, what happens here stays here. Hey, Richard Munchkin, how are you? Uh, North Carolina. We've got um, Illinois, Highland Park, uh, downtown Seattle. Mm -hmm. Burlington, Mass. Hey, Mass girl. Mass girl. Here we are. Brooklyn. Yes, Rona. Another Illinois, Mr. Peterson. Yeah, we're we are global. We're so global. Mm -hmm. So global. We are waiting on a couple of tellers who are a little bit late, and that that will dictate sort of the way we move things forward here. Uh, but I will go over some basic things that the tellers know, and the audience, if you've been here before. Nothing's changed, but I'll go over the basics again. And then uh, Mary, as always, please just listen and make sure I don't screw this up. You know, it's like I just sometimes. Anyhow, we've got uh, uh, about 15 storytellers. We have two rounds. So what I'm going to do in about five minutes is I'm going to pick four names. Those are our first four storytellers. And each of them will tell a 99 second story. A 99 second story is, as it sounds, uh, 99 seconds or less. And uh, tellers, I'm reminding you that at 80 seconds, you'll get this. Hopefully everyone sees that. That's a warning. So you know, well, you kind of wrap it up-ish so you have, so you can gauge it. After those four storytellers go, if they've all not gone over time, if they've gone way over time, then they're not eligible. Mary will summarize their story. There will be a poll. And then everybody, including the storytellers, will vote. This is not ranked choice, by the way. This is just straight up voting. We will do that for four sections. So that will include all the tellers in round one. And from that, we will have four winners. And Mary has a vote. She's got power, right? So we have four section winners plus Queen Mary's putting someone through. And there is someone else here who's putting another teller through. So that will be a total of six. Does he or she want to identify him or herself? Is it me or what's happening yeah, right now? It's, it's you, it's you. <laughs> Adi is in New Jersey. He's been very busy. He's joining us and uh, Adi was part of our season one. He was like an essential figure. In season one, but he's been busy buying things and changing the world for the now more of a hidden figure, you might say. Sure, behind the scenes, 
Jeez. Right. So, uh, so uh, we have so a total of six tellers will go through. Before any of our tellers that are competing tell, we have a guest here. It's becoming a tradition. So in a few minutes, I'll introduce her. I'm going to wait to let to tell you who, who it is. And she's going to start us off with the first 99. It's not to be judged or convinced, just a 99 that she wants to share. And when she's done, we will get into the actual competition. Here's what I would uh, encourage everybody who's voting. Please think about this. These are supposed to be true stories and personal stories told without notes. If it's not true, if it's not entirely personal or the person's reading, you decide if you wanna put them through or not, right? I think we should reward people for playing by the rules, but the only absolute disqualifier uh, is the time, okay? So I'm gonna let the, the voters decide you want to put someone through, even though it may not have been true or personal, or they were reading. Right, Mary? Fair? It's, I think it's very fair. We are fair, Sean. We try. We are known to be fair. We try. Uh, and we have a few newcomers. Won't tell you who they are. Don't want to influence the voting. Got a few newcomers, which I always love. And, and a good number of people who have been doing this a little while. Uh, Mary, do I need to let these fine folks know anything else? Mm. No, I think you've covered it you know, amazingly as usual, Sean. So. Nah, stop. True facts. Mm -hmm. True facts. Now, do All you right. have the hat from Peru, though? I just want to know. Yes, I have a hat that was purchased in Peru. In Peru. And this has been a tradition. There's two of them. This is one of them. Yes. The names are in the hat. This is from where I will draw the names. It's very straightforward, really, isn't it? Yes, it really is. We make it easy, simple. Yeah, and at the end of all of this, uh, in the set, there, there'll be a second round, same thing, and then someone's going to win money, uh, $99. Shocker, right? Now, I that know. is U.S. money, so I don't know what to do if our Canadian and or Norwegian participants win, because there are. this is an international crowd. We'll sure. work it out, we'll right? It. We'll be fair we, about it. We always do. Yes. All right, so I, I've got nothing else. I wanna just uh, invite our, our, not our first official storyteller, but our, our sort of sacrificial storyteller yes. uh, to the stage. I'm gonna ask everybody to please mute themselves. I'm going to highlight her. Her name is Ann Perky. She is in the Chicago land area. And again, this is not to be voted upon. This is just for your listening pleasure. Ann, whenever you're ready. Okay, Sean. Technical, just sec. I love the uh, the tension that you're creating here. We're all waiting. What's happening? Here we go. Ready? Good. This this is art. That's right. It's art. Art. Okay. It's COVID, and I've just finished my shelter-in-place breakfast of a soft-boiled egg, a box of Good and Plenty, and a Coke. I go on Zoom and there I am. All I see are cheeks, mine, chubby. I try to follow Jennifer Aniston's pandemic diet of poached swordfish and a fresh beet salad with a sprig of thyme. And I burn the swordfish, fed it to the dogs and ordered an extra large deep dish pizza and breadsticks. I read that Gwyneth Paltrow broke down in pandemic and ate bread. I feel for her, so I scarf a 12 inch baguette. I know the Duchess of Sussex is secretly eating a happy meal in a linen closet. So I toast her with an order of supersized fries. COVID has been brutal. I've had to soothe myself somehow. Food became my answer. And I feel why not have a little tenderness, a little compassion for myself, for all of us. We've all been through a global pandemic for Christ's sakes and it's amazing we've emerged intact. And as we dig out from this and return to some kind of freedom, I feel pretty sure I will not be having a Coke for breakfast anymore. I can close the chapter on this hard time and accept myself as I am, even if I failed with the poached swordfish. Boom. 
Uh, thank you, Ann Perky. Uh, now, Ann, uh, she started us off. No one's voting on Ann. She ended with boom. Not required of storytellers, but it has become another tradition. Makes a very clear signal that you're done. Thanks, Ann. When are you going to come back, Ann, Miss Perky, and compete is my question. Very soon, Sean. Yes. But that was a departure for me. The, what do you mean that departure? Light and cute as opposed to from the crypt. You know, Sean. Right, right. You're not typically <laughs> light and cute. I mean, you're cute and yeah, you know what I mean. I, I, good, change it up. Mary? That's fabulous. I know Jennifer Anson is not eating that diet. I don't care what anybody said. You know, Gwyneth Paltrow breaking down and eating bread. Come on, Gwyneth is having chips every night. Let's be honest about this, you know. Stop selling the magazines, people. Jeez. I think Come goop on. is slang for guacamole. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay. <laughs> By the way, we good, in, good uh, one or two storytellers who weren't able to make it, I don't believe. That means if anybody's in the audience who wants to give this a shot, you can do that. Up to you. All um, right. Let me know ASAP. Message me. Message Queen Mary in the chat and we can sneak you in. If not, all good. All right, I'm going to pull four names. They are our first four storytellers that we'll tell in this order. Remember, if you are in the audience, whatever system you use to decide who you think won that section on you, just listen to the four of them. They're short. If they're all eligible and they don't go over time, Mary will summarize. That should help. I'll put a poll up. You'll pick your favorite. Mary, are we good? Can we go to the Peruvian hat and do this? Let's do it. Woo. Right. Let's start it up. We have got three names. Cat Dean. Jay Roar, Tracy Starin, and Gorov in Norway. Again, Kat, Jay, Tracy, and Gorov. So Kat Bean, I'm gonna find you and spotlight you, ask you to unmute yourself, and you are teller number one, break a leg. Oh, fix my hair, all right. Let me get my timer out. Right, so I'm, I'm going for a walk with my mom and, uh, and it's been raining. So I'm wearing my big bird yellow raincoat and I'm pouting because I hate the big bird yellow raincoat. And it's for babies and, and I'm five, I'm not a baby. I'm five and a half even. And, and I deserve a mature raincoat like my friend Stacy has. It's blue and it has the bunny ears on top. But mom says that this, this yellow raincoat makes it easier for the cars to see me. So I'm stuck with it. But then I'm, I see a treasure on the ground. It's a quarter, real money. You can, buy a, you can buy a candy bar with a quarter. I need that quarter. So I yank my hand out of my mom's hand and I start over to get this treasure. And, and I hear it, the sound of brakes uh, and my mom screaming. And I look up to see a woman at the, at the behind the steering wheel of a car and she's looking really shaken. And she rolls the window down of her car and she shouts out the window to my mom, thank God for that yellow raincoat or I wouldn't have seen her in time. My heart just sinks. It wasn't a freaking quarter, it was a, it was a beer tab. And now I'm never gonna get rid of this stupid raincoat. Boom. Thank you, Kat Dean, starting us off. Kat, by the way, lives in the great state of North Carolina. Apparently very good looking people live here. I mean, am I right? Hello, yeah. you know, okay. Cool, yeah. Kat, thanks for leading us off. Not that you really had much choice. No. Uh, Kat did a good job, stayed under time, good story. As you know, uh, I'm letting the tellers know this if perhaps they didn't hear this. At 80 seconds, you'll see this. Might be worth, if you're a teller, to pin me. Don't get frisky. Pin me, and uh, this will guarantee that I, am, I can be seen. And Mary, am I right when I say, isn't what we all want to be seen? We all want to be that seen. that what we want to be seen and heard? Yeah. We yeah. do, especially now that we some of us have been vaccinated. We all want to be seen and heard and pinned. And pinned. Yeah. 
Let's add that to the lexicon right. yeah, for sure. Next up, live from uh, uh, Chicago land. His name is Jay. He's also a handsome man. He's unmuted. I'm going to spotlight him. Jay, take your time. Hi. Hi. Can everybody hear me? You're good. All right. <clears throat> so I'm on my way home from a party with my roommate and my fiance. And we're walking along and we're having just a wonderful evening, youthful, carefree. Nothing could possibly go wrong. We're going to live forever. And uh, my fiance got ahead of us. She started to cross the intersection. And that's when I noticed a car that was clearly being piloted by a drunk driver screaming down the avenue, going too fast. There was no way that they were going to stop. It was, there was no doubt in my mind. I could see that already that it was going to hit her. And as it came towards her, I realized in that moment, uh, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that ever since this woman had said yes, that she loved me enough that she wanted to spend the rest of her life with me, that every day afterwards, I had become increasingly aware of the fact that I did not want to marry this person. And now like a gift from the universe, this drunk driver was coming out of nowhere to smash her out of existence. And all I had to do was do nothing. And then I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, the awkwardness of breaking off the engagement and all the fallout that would come from that. However, I also seen, I also sort of realized in that moment that if I couldn't survive the emotional catastrophe of breaking off a marriage proposal, I probably wasn't going to survive the feelings that ensue when you let your fiance get murdered by a drunk driver. So I snatched her off the road. And fortunately, what happened afterwards is that this instilled in her this whole sense of uh, life is short. So she started cheating on me with some dude. And as a result of that, it was really easy for me to end the relationship. Boom. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I, I, it should be noted, Jay's got a pretty, I don't think it's so influenced voting at all. You gotta love his background. Am I right, Mary? I love his shirt. You like his shirt and his background? And Yeah, the background's cool, but the shirt is definitely cool. I mean, I'm all into that spooky stuff. So yeah, it works. You are a little bit into that, aren't you? I am. You're a lot of bit into it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that either of us can say, and Aditya is also part of this, that should influence the vote. Oh, we really? have all been to slams. We've all been there where something said that influences the vote. Now, what can influence the vote is paying uh, Mary or Addy directly. They'll give you their Venmo and they can be bought. Absolutely. But short of that, and words aren't going to do a damn thing. Am I right? No. We're recording. No. I have to make it clear that I'm <laughs> We're totally joking. For the children. Children. Before we go on to Tracy, our third teller, everyone probably notices that both you and Adi have great teeth. You know that I love teeth and you've got great teeth and so does Adi. Yes, yes. I think our, our mother spent a lot on our smiles. I'm going to assume. More, I know more, mine did. More awkward moments created by Sean. Uh, genetically Tracy. gifted these teeth by my mother, so effectively, yes. Yes, yeah. see? Yes. Muting, muting you both, finding Tracy. She's been patient. We're spotlighting her. Tracy, take your time. Have some fun. So I had decided to forego the huge eighth grade blowout graduation party that Michelle Cerebella was having because my friend Lori hadn't been invited because she was pretty and she was popular and Michelle was jealous of being a mean girl. So I spent the night at Lori's house with her babysitting her little sister while their mom was out. And we were having a really good time. We ordered pizza and we rented movies and pretty early on in the night, my mom called and she said, you know, I think I'd like to come pick you up. And I said, no, why don't be ridiculous. Lori's mom is gonna drive me home when she gets home. And she said, well, still. And I said, no, and I was able to talk her down and I hung up the phone and I thought, what was that all about? And about an hour later, my mother called much more urgently this time. She said, I'm coming to get you right now. And I said, no, with a lot of teen angst. I said, why are you being like this? Stop embarrassing me. You never had a problem with Lori before or her mother. I've been here a thousand times and you never given me a hard time. And I argued with her for a while and I hung up the phone. And I said to Lori, what is going on? And about an hour later, my mother called up, absolutely adamant this time, I'm coming to get you. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And we were arguing on the phone. And just at that minute, Lori's mom walked in. I said, Gail, I'm sorry, but my mom wants me to come home immediately. And we walked out the door and she drove me home. And I put my key in the door, ready to give my mother a piece of my mind. But when I walked in the door, my mother and my stepfather were standing at the top of the stairs, faces 
tight and jaws clenched and they never were standing at the, at the top of the stairs when I came home. And I braced for what was coming. And my mother said, your grandmother called. And I thought this could be anything. I have elderly grandparents. And she said, honey, I'm sorry. Your father died. Boom. Thank you, Tracy. In Queens, by the way. So Queen Mary, as is often the case, we have had a teller uh, in North Carolina, one in Chicago, one now in New York. Yeah. And our fourth around. teller of section one is not in any of those places. Mm -mm. You know where he is? He's not in the United States. He's not even in the United States. No. We've gone global. Uh, he is in Oslo, Norway, which is supposed to be a stunningly beautiful city. So I've heard. Uh, and in a moment, we are going to find him and we are going to spotlight him. And then, if everyone's under time, we will launch a poll after Mary summarizes. And if there is anybody who went over time, we will be kind about it, but we will say you're not on the poll. You got to play by the rules. Am I right? Exactly. Fair. Gaurav, Gaurav, uh, I'm going to unmute you or you unmute yourself. Spotlight you and take your time and have some fun. It's a beautiful windy morning of summer in India. I'm camping nearly 7,000 meters high up in the Himalayas and waiting for a helicopter to rescue us. I'm here with my friend Subhu who is not doing well due to pulmonary edema. And others left yesterday to send help to airlift us in that helicopter. Subhu asked for water. So I go outside, melt some snow and bring him a cup. And as Subhu takes the sip, he coughs right in the cup. And the cup turns red. It's blood. He drops the cup and collapses in my arms with his eyes wide open. He's no longer coughing. He's not breathing. I can't find his pulse either. All by myself, I immediately start CPR. But the more the chest I would pump, the more blood would squirt out of his mouth, frothing. As I continue to wait for that mythical helicopter wrapped in my arms, Subhu is dead. And I am maybe next. Boom. Gaurav, right, thanks, man. Things are a little yellower in uh, Oslo, don't you think? They're a little yellow here. I love it. The sort of background's got that. It looks like yellow wallpaper or something. Great job, section one, round one, slam, uh, season number four, getting off to an awesome start. Mary, uh, we are, I have great news. You know what it is, right? Everybody's in? Everybody's in, nobody yeah. went over, always feels good. It does. Uh, tellers, by the way, uh, please check the chat because that's where people will comment and respond to you. You've probably already figured that out. Yeah. That is a good way to do it. Uh, just letting Susan know she didn't get my a direct message that you're in the hat, Susan. Susan wants to tell. So, so awesome. Mary, yes, Queen Mary, my co-host, please mm -hmm. summarize and I will uh, launch this poll and we're done. You got it. So Kat's life was saved by the immature yellow raincoat when she thought a, a beer tab was a quarter. Jay had to make a split de second decision whether a breakup or a car careening into his fiance was easier and then found out later she had a um, life changing event after that. Tracy was at a party and was a teenager and her life changed when she had to get home to find out her dad passed and Gaurav was racing against time to be saved and rescued, but unfortunately his friend did not make it. All right, Mary, so just to be super clear here, uh, can you please, so what, what would I say about cat stories so everyone's super clear? I put yellow raincoat. Should I put another word there? Um, I mean, her you know, life was saved. She almost got hit by a car, so All right. accident maybe? Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, I think- You, you could put North there. Carolina in there, Sean. It feels like okay. kind of up to your speed. <laughs> that, that. All right, I think this is clear enough. Everyone heard it. Uh, I'm going to save it. I just want to make sure that I get this right. And we will launch this poll in just a moment. And you will vote. Now, this means every single person uh, should be able to vote. And uh, hang on, hang on. We have Kat, Jay, 
Tracy and Gorav. And if it says poll 16, ignore it. It's the poll in front of you that I want you to vote on. Uh, here we go. Thanks. 35, 37 people could vote. I'd love to see 37 people voting. Right? Yeah. It's and they're doing close. it. They're voting it. Be real close. Everybody needs to vote. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I see what's going on. Everybody, please vote. We've got two more people and it can make a difference. It's really mm -hmm. close. Two more people. Where are you? We're going to go on for another 15 seconds. Mary, you seeing what I'm seeing here? I am, darling. I'm writing it down. Let's make Aditya Coho so he can see it too. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to give it another uh, uh, 10 seconds because someone might be in the bathroom. The reason I'm waiting this long is it can't make a difference. It's a one vote game right now for this uh, top two spots. We'll say this felt like a group of death, you know? It, yeah, for sure. That's All right, fine. I'm closing this poll. We do have a winner. It is very, very close. And that is it. That is all. Great job. Section one done. Aditya, you could see the results as well, right? No, but that's okay. We'll just chat it through. It's probably because it was in between the process or something. Okay, we'll figure it out just to make sure that your vote and Mary's vote are obviously not the winners of the, the sections because we don't want to be redundant. And yeah. I don't mean that in the British way when you get fired. Oh. I mean it in a different way. Let's, let's just move on. Uh, <laughs> four more names. At this point, we have 14 tellers and we do have one or two that might come a little bit late. At this moment, it's 14. I've got four more names. I'm out of the Peruvian hat. Out of the Peruvian hat with my mediocre lighting. We have got, in this order, Tori. Get ready, Tori. Susan. If Susan's ready. Can you see that? Erin. Um, and Andrew. Tori, Susan, Erin, Andrew. Section number two. I'm going to find Tori. Hi. She's had a busy day. Uh, Tori, take your time whenever you are ready. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Great. I am auditioning for the part of Lenore the lead female role in a low budget independent film. So they asked me to perform this very dramatic monologue twice. Once where I acted out and then a second time where I expressed the monologue silently into the camera with my face. I pour my heart into this audition. And normally they'll say like, oh, thanks for your time, we'll let you know. But when the answer is obvious, there is no need to make a person wait, right? The director looks me dead in the eye and he says, wow, you are a really bad actress. But then three weeks later, the same director calls me on the phone and offers me the part of Lenore. Well, so obviously when he watched back my audition tape, he must have seen something in me on film, you know, that he couldn't see in person. And so I ask him, did you watch my audition tape? And he says, yeah, look, Tori, I'll be totally honest with you. Out of everyone who auditioned for the part of Lenore, you are the only one who is available during the days we can get the film set. Say, Look, I know we got off on the wrong foot, but, but I can't make the movie unless I can cast this part. And I'm hoping you'll say yes, because I really, really want to make this movie. Well, when the answer is obvious, there is no need to make a person wait, right? So I say, Let's do it. Let's make a movie. And we do. Boom. All right, Tori Shine in the uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Good job. As always, Queen Mary, it goes without saying uh, how good all of these storytellers are. Amazing what they all bring. The stories, the seconds. Amazing. All the slams are getting better and better. The quality is <laughs> very good. Yes, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. Just uh, tremendous. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, next up now, we have got Susan. And I want to make sure I can find Susan. She was a late comer, at least to me. So I want to make sure she's ready. Susan, are you here? Yes, you are. Yep. 
And Susan, are you prepared to tell your story? Thank you. Awesome. Take your time. I entitled this story, Finally Free. I'm standing on the balcony, looking down. Below me is Toronto, Ontario. The twinkling lights are everywhere. I'm draped in 14 karat, 14 karat gold on my neck, on my wrists, on my hands. Hmm. And I'm looking around, just taking in the beauty. And I hear behind me the conversations and the laughter. But there I am, standing there alone in my evening dress. I'm in my 20s and it's in the 1970s. There's this murky feeling that's been in the pit of my stomach. And it starts to rise and rise and seep through my body and it comes to my neck and I can barely breathe. I left whatever relationship that was. For whatever reason I left it, I can't remember anymore. But I can tell you, I left that affluent lifestyle and I ended up in the flea traps in Toronto, Ontario at Bathurst and Dundas. Now, for those of you that don't know what flea traps are, what they are are small rooms, paper thin walls. It's where the mice huddle together to keep warm during the winter. It's where the roaches climb up the legs of the table and they join you for dinner and for supper and for breakfast. And I remember being in that environment and I took that cigarette and I inhaled it and I blew out smoke rings and I knew I was finally free, finally free, boom. Thanks, Susan. Susan, by the way, where are you? Are you up in Toronto? Yes, I'm in Toronto, oh, Toronto, okay. Ontario. Oh, all right, thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you for telling that story. We've got a couple Canadians here, uh, uh, Mary. We do. We and do. I'm just gonna do one quick tech thing here because I wanna ensure that we can make Mr. Adi a co-host so he can uh, make this as good of an event as, as it can be. Yes. There he is, Adi is in, by the way, in Jersey. Queen Mary's up in Massachusetts. I'm right. in North Carolina. Uh, but it's not about us. It's about our storytellers. And next up, uh, Erin, is that back-to-back -back Canadians? It is. Unbelievable. It is. Huh? Where is Erin? I haven't seen her in a while. This is the, this is the end of days, Sean. <laughs> okay. The spotlight. Erin, take your time, Erin. There we go. I am five years old and I am the youngest kid in my class and the smallest kid in my class. In fact, I am so small that the other grade ones like to pick me up and carry me around like I'm a cabbage patch doll. And if you remember in the 80s, that was a big deal. Kids are always picking me up and carrying me places. But I'm sure if I can show them that I'm brave, if I can show them that I'm not a baby, if I can show them that I am tough, this will stop happening. It's an icy cold day and everyone is putting together this kind of like sculpture. There's, there's the climbing apparatus and they're putting like ice and stuff around it. And I'm scared because I'm a clumsy kid. But if I can do this, they will all know I'm tough. So I'm waiting to take part. Um, but the sun is really, really bright. So I keep like putting my head down and I'm in one of those, those 80s uh, like snowsuits. So I'm basically just star arms and so my head is heavier and heavier and I go what they call snow blind, which means suddenly everything is dark. And I step away to try to get my bearings and I smash right into a railing, just in time to see something. And that is a curtain of blood going over my eyes. And I scream at the top of my lungs. And one of the, the teachers like comes running up to me and picks me up and dashes me over to the office and she says, this little boy has hurt himself. And that is the final indignity. Boys in my class do stuff like compete to see who can eat a buck. But I stay quiet and I go get my stitches and I am commended for being brave. So while I may not be brave in school, I may not be eating bugs, outside of school, I am brave and I am eating McDonald's. Thank you, Erin. Back to back Canadians. All right. Both in Toronto area, I think, too. Yeah, we can't. Multiple blood in the snow stories as well. This is fantastic. 
our final storyteller of section <clears throat> two is going to be uh we're going to go back to massachusetts but the western part the western part of massachusetts his name is andrew uh andrew let me find you sir and spotlight you and then we are your audience at least for about 99 seconds okay great I arrive for my appointment a bit early and I'm sitting in my car having a couple sips of coffee as I contemplate the big health questions that always invade my brain when I go to these annual appointments. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see a flash of blue and this Tesla pulls into the parking lot and then a doctor gets out and, and, and it's my doctor. And he's wearing a Canada goose coat that costs more than my car is worth. And he's also wearing really expensive sunglasses. And, and as I see him walk across the parking lot, I, I question my life choices for a second because I tell myself if I'd done things differently, maybe I'd be the one driving the Tesla and I'd be the one wearing the cool shades. I mean, it's hard not to question your life choices when you're sitting in the parking lot outside the doctor's office waiting for an annual cancer screening because your dad died too young. Then he stops and he takes a few steps back to his car and he reaches in to grab a mask. What kind of doctor forgets his mask? I want my doctor to protect me. I, I want him to be attractive and strong and cool. And I want him to be my age. And I don't want him to look old ever. This doctor is my age and he moves with this slow non-athletic gait that's disturbing and he's wearing Crocs. I want a Tesla, sure, but I don't want to wear Crocs. And why is he wearing sunglasses into the office? He's just a man. He, he's not a miracle worker. I know that he can't really protect me. The guy with the shuffling gait and the sunglasses who forgets his mask and his pricey car, he can't protect me. The most he can do is hopefully save me if things suddenly go south. And that's just so depressing. I'm now in the exam room. He comes in and we chat for a little bit about my medical history. And then I do what I came here to do. I pull down my pants and bend over. Boom. Thank you, Mr. Andrew Shelfo in Western Massachusetts. You know, Mary, we got a little bit of this, a little bit of that, yeah. different types of 99s. Uh, one of our tellers went over, so they cannot be in the poll. Sorry, Aaron Rodgers. I love you and your stories, but you were over by too much. So, Mary, yeah. please summarize Tori, Susan, and Andrew, and then we will launch that poll. All right. So Tori was told she was a bad actress, but got the part anyway and decided to say yes and make a movie. Susan rather dying with the rats and stay in a relationship she was in. And Andrew was thinking about whether or not the doctor was, could protect him and his life choices when he went into the doctor's office and then had to bend over. All right, so uh, again, that's Tori. I apologize, I have some weird things going on with my mic. Uh, section two, for this poll, we have Tori, Susan, and Andrew. I'm going to save it. I'm going to launch it in just a moment. And then we will have two winners, officially. Uh, and hang on one sec. And here we go. And it is Tori, Susan, Andrew. Everyone, please vote. We have how many people can vote? Upwards, 38. I hope I see every single person because last time it made a difference. They are voting. They are voting. It is close. Boy, oh boy. We got a, uh, this is all right. They're all so good. They, they're really, really good. Really good. We got five more people that could vote. I'd love to see you vote, vote, vote. And make sure you vote, y'all. We'll give another, like, I apologize for audio issues. I am dealing with a broken what, microphone. What is happening with your microphone? It's like. I'm all over the place, right? You, you're having a thing go on. I know. It's just not cooperating tonight. Not cooperating. Mm -hmm. All right, let's close this poll because we do have a winner. We do. They have doctors for that, Sean. If you apologies if you for know. my audio issues. <laughs> Thank you, Adi. Yes, I will be able to fix the mic at some point soon. Hopefully. You you will. You all will. right. So It'll right now, just so nothing to, to be ashamed know, of, Sean. To let everyone know, in our final two sections of our own, there's only three tellers, total of 14. A couple tellers could make it. Uh, which means if you are listening to this and you want to pop in, you can do that. That's the way we've set it up and formatted it. Uh, it's still just as fair, uh, max of four per section. So let me know ASAP or, or Mary. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, if not, then we will have three in this round, a section, three in the final, uh, and we'll take it from there. Absolutely. We'll have Any winners. thoughts thus far, Mary, on the, uh, on the what is it, uh, eight stories we've heard? I, I have to tell you, if, if I was uh, voting in the, uh, in the polls, it would be hard for me to choose. Yeah. It would. They're, they're all so polished and good and a beginning, middle, middle and end. I'm just, I'm amazed. They do all the things, good stories. They do all do. the things and do it well. And do it well. Yes. Right? Crafted well, uh, delivered well. It's tricky. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, and the nature of slams is that there are winners and I won't say losers, but non-winners just to be PC. Non-winners, I love it. But that's it. just the way it is. And I think maybe, arguably, it raises the, uh, the quality in some ways. Who knows? It does. It does. So, Everybody uh, brings a game. A good game. Great game. Three more names. And then remember, uh, that is your last chance if you want to hop in and slam yourself this evening. Let me pull three more names out of the hat. Yay. We have Richard Munchkin. Raphael in New York, I believe. Richard's in Vegas. Nadia's in the Chicago area, I believe. So again, Richard in this order, Richard, Raphael, and Nadia. Let me find you, spotlight you, and break a leg, Mr. Munchkin. It's the 1980s, and I buy a fake Piaget gold watch. I need this watch because I'm a professional gambler. And when I go in the casinos, I want them to think I have a lot of money. So I'm playing later, I'm playing backgammon with this guy and he looks at the watch and he goes, he's from Sweden. He says, you know, in my country, that watch costs $7,000. And I say, well, I got a good price on it in the States. So I'm thinking, man, this watch rocks, right? Anyway, I have to take a business trip to Poland and I go through customs and in customs, they want to make sure that you're not going to smuggle stuff into Poland and try to sell it. So the customs agent says to me, what do you have to declare? And I say, well, um, I've got a couple of cameras and he goes, okay, but don't sell. I said, no problem. And uh, what else? Well, I have the diamond earring. It was the 80s. And he says, uh, okay, uh, but don't sell. And what else? I say, uh, well, I, ha I have this watch, but don't worry, I won't sell it. He goes, mm, nobody buy. Oh. Mr. Richard Munchkin in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you, Richard. All right, Mary, so we've got, uh, that was Richard, up next is Raphael, and then we have Nadia. Uh, Raphael, let me find you. And Raphael, you're in, uh, you're in New York? I'm actually on the eastern tip of Long Island. Oh, all right. We'll talk about that after, I wanna hear more. They, they call you it the North Pole. What's that? Okay. You're, you're spotlighted and take, take your time. Okay. I'm standing on the porch and I count 16 shooting stars. I noticed the star showers taking place all over the sky. I let Jack the dog out on the leash, only on the leash, because I knew I couldn't shout so early in the morning to get him back. In his astonishment at the strange stroke of luck in the darkness, he bolts away from me. But instead of running away, he goes to his usual spot under the tree and lies down. I think how mature he's become. See, things do change. I look up and count the shooting stars, which come at intervals like fireworks, except because they display horizontally, they seem to be on urgent missions. After my 44th shooting star, certainly a lifetime quota, I go over to, see, to get Jack, only to discover that his well-behaved form is actually part of a bush that only looks like a dog lying down in the darkness. I spend an hour searching for him, jangling my keys. In the end, he shows up when he wants to, with that what's up look on his face, as if we're just running into each other on the way to the train station. It's just enough astronomy and just enough earthly chaos to put me in my place in the universe. Boom. Boom, thanks, Raphael. Uh, Raphael, what town in the uh, eastern part of Long Island are you in? I'm on what's called the North Fork. I'm in a town called Mattituck. 
Yep. Uh, I grew up, I grew up in Suffolk County, so I know it. Okay, well. great. So yep. nice. Uh, yeah, it's great out here. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Thanks, man. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for that story. I appreciate it. You, you are the second of three in section three and uh, we are going to find Nadia who is not in Mattituck. <laughs> that I know for sure. I'm going to spotlight you, Nadia. You've unmuted yourself. Take your time, young lady, whenever you're ready. The excitement was in the air. I was ready for my trip to Barcelona. The clothes were packed in my suitcase. The books I got from the library for the long flight were already in my carry-on. My sister-in-law and my niece were all set to arrive in 45 minutes to take me to O'Hare. Time to get a shower, get dressed, and be out the door. Quick mental note, remember to grab the passport from the family document box. And ready, out the door. Whoops, the passport, the passport. Gosh, my heart skipped a beat just thinking of how I could have forgotten the passport. Phew. I ran to my bedroom closet, got the document box, opened it really fast. Ah, <sighs> no passport. I couldn't breathe. No, 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 no. Remember you went to Canada a few months before. Maybe you left the passport in the front pocket of the carry-on. Nope, not there. My heart started beating really fast. Tears sprang from my eyes as I ran frantically from throughout the house, opening and emptying all the drawers, all the boxes, looking for my passport. My ride was there. I collapsed to the floor on a pile of clothes and papers and pictures and started to sob uncontrollably when I heard my niece. Is this your passport? I found it in your laptop bag. Boom. Boom it is. Thanks, Nadia. Section three is done. Queen Mary, good news. Yes. Good news. Uh, all three were uh, at or under time. I will uh, wait. I will wait for your summaries and then I will make the poll. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Sounds great. So Richard thought he had one over on everyone when he bought a fake watch, but even the security guy at the airport knew, don't sell it. Raphael let his wonderful dog Jack out on a leash thinking that he lied down and was mature under a tree and then found out after he looked at 44 shooting stars that he was gone for a little while, showing up when he wanted to. And Nadia was freaking out over losing her passport for a Barcelona trip when her niece found it and saved the day. All right, I put a couple of sort of key words in there. I think it'll help. Yeah. So uh, I think that should be fine. And this is the third of four polls in round one. It's getting exciting. It is, I know. I always love this moment. Yeah. All right, so again, we have Richard, Raphael, and Nadia. And again, I should remind everyone, there's still time if you want to pop in, you could be the fourth teller in section four. That's fine by me. Let me know ASAP, like literally in the next 30 seconds. Launching poll. <laughs> Richard, Raphael, and Nadia. 38 people can vote. I hope you all vote. Yes, please. Yes. All right, we got uh, six more and it can make a difference. So I hope everyone we who can. can vote does vote. Okay. And Mary, I mean, if, if I'm a teller and I'm voting, I'm voting for myself, right? Um, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, you know, I want to root all my fellow tellers on, but if I had a vote, I would vote for myself. That's how you grow. Oh, we haven't even heard from Addy in a while. <laughs> I, I'm no. so appreciative. Addy, don't worry. You're going to have your time here. You're going to have moments to shine. I love what you've done in the background, new bookcase or whatever it may be. If it's not new, don't say anything right now. I don't actually care. I'm just trying to make small talk. <laughs> um, I think our section three is done. We have three more tellers. Again, we will do the same. Mary, it's happening again. The mic. On. Look, you know I'm a pro. This is just a particularly yeah. weird moment. But you know what pros do? Hey, we adjusted the moment, right? Right. And the show must go on because this is live. This is right. live. Pros, pros usually don't call themselves pros either. That's but you just, are. Yeah. It's fine. Listen, we break all the rules. That's what we do here at the 99 Second Sports Center. Thank you. And we break the mics as well. We break the mics. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> why we brought Adi. I forgot. That's yes. it. That's we, it. Three more all? names. Nobody else wanted to pop in this evening. So the total will be um, 14. Mary, you're getting votes, by the way, even though you're not in a poll. Oh, so, so that's cool. 
Thank you, Richard Munchkin. And remember y'all, uh, we will have a little break after round one, right? Yep. Opportunity, uh, whatever you wanna do with a few minutes. And uh, so for the winners, we'll go through and then Mary will have a vote and, uh, and Aditya will have a vote. That'll be a total of six. And I'm not gonna tell you who won the, who won the section or who Mary or Adi put in. We'll just say six names and we're gonna milk that as long as we possibly can. Um, yes. It makes for great TV. It does. All right, next up in this order, Final three, they've been so patient. James in Chicago, Shweta in the Boston area, and finally Nishama out in California. Mr. Peterson, there you are. Unmute yourself, please. I'm gonna spotlight you and uh, break the leg. Take your time. I did unmute, right? You're good, you're good. Nineteen seventy. I graduate from a small college in New England. My dad asks, "What now?" I want a year of adventure. This is the kind of idea an English major comes up with when he discovers that he's otherwise unemployable. My dad nods and gives me three hundred dollars, the amount his parents gave him when he graduated from college. I jump into a VW bus with four of my friends, six guitars, and head west at 45 miles per hour. We hit San Francisco. We sang on street corners. We sang in parks. We sang on top of a mountain at a counterculture wedding. There were soap bubbles the size of planets. When I came down, literally, I wrote a letter to my dad describing the day. He wrote back, a letter on graph paper with numbered paragraphs. The first six were job suggestions. Number seven was a review of my letter. And then he added a PS. I'm really intrigued with this idea of a year of adventure. My year of adventure lasted six months. I ran out of money. I joined the ranks of the gainfully employed. My dad, on the other hand, sold the house, the cars, most of his possessions, and bought a humongous RV and set off for points unknown. He stole my idea and showed what it would look like if you had money and credit cards. Boom. Whoa, did you just snap? I, I think there was James some Peterson there. was like, screw you in your boom. I'm snapping. I think it, I think it was a double snap. It was, it was like two-handed two snap. No favoritism, folks. None ever. No. You have great teeth, both of you. <laughs> James, not, not, not too bad. Double snaps not going to get you through unless the story was good enough. And it may be. I don't know. I don't know. The voters are going to vote. Addie's going to get a vote. Mary's going to get a vote. It's just that simple. But we are human. You? We have feelings. Oh, Mary, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Mary's definitely. Uh, next up, Shweta. She's in Massachusetts. It's don't call it a state. It's a Commonwealth. Let's find her. That's, that is correct. She's been patient, as is Nishama. Uh, can we find her? I'll help. Oh, there she is. You got then, her? Uh, Shweta, you need to unmute yourself and we'll spotlight you and take your time. Got it. Oh, I'm here. You are good. Is the lighting less atrocious? I've already started the clock. I hope that's part of your story. I'm just kidding. Go. Joke, joke. I'm standing outside of the high school and I get a call. Your mom's been in a car accident. Oh my God, is she okay? Oh yeah, yeah, she's fine. But the car's totaled. You're gonna have to take your sister to her physical appointment. Are you kidding me, mom? Do you not know what today is? Anyways, I get in the car and I go pick up my sister at middle school and drive her to the doctor's office. I walk in and she goes in. I'm in the waiting room sitting and sweating, pacing and panting. Believe me, I was getting looks, the kind of looks a 17 year old girl gets when she has a visceral reaction like this in a doctor's office. I catch my sister's eye and she promises me we are a urine sample away from leaving. We get in the car and we start driving. My mom calls. Hey, do you think you could pick me up at the car lot? Seriously, mom, two for freaking two. Do you not get, I need to get home? I go pick her up. We drive home and let's be real. I'm not going to try and maneuver this car into the garage. So I park it on our driveway. I run in, 
holding my pee up the stairs, my sister, my mom, they follow me. I open my computer. I type in username, S but password. I know better than to tell you that. All right, application status. Congratulations, Shweta Bhatt. You are part of Brown University's class of 2013. Boom. Thank you, Shweta in Massachusetts. Boy, they're getting younger and younger, aren't they, Mary? Yeah, yeah. And when you say stuff like that, then you're, then you're just making yourself old. When you say stuff like that, right? young people would never say what I just said. No, until they get old. Thank you for that. That's, That's right. more of an Addy comment, but yep, Addy's rubbing off on Mary now. This I, is why I, I was in. coming up with uh, maybe calling the story like Schwedding, Schweta, something like no, that. No, <laughs> no, no uh, influence over the voting. Well, this is why we brought Addy in for your consultants, consultancy. Yes. Uh, big time, big, big dollars. Finally, <laughs> my uh, check I'll, is in the mail. Uh, yes, it is. It's ben, I'll bend my you. Out in the West Coast, <laughs> I believe it's in Northern California, there was a woman who has been so patient. She's raising her hands. She's unmuted, she's ready. She's the final storyteller of round one. Her name is Nishama, break a leg. I trotted down to the beach and I stripped off my clothes and I plunged into the channel and oh man, it felt so good. The water on my naked body. It's, you know, with no fabric in the way. It was the 70s and I live in a little coastal town about an hour north of San Francisco and things were pretty relaxed back then. I got very clever because the tides would carry me across to the opposite shore. I was not a very strong swimmer. And then I'd walk in one direction or another and angle myself back so I could get to back to the beach and my clothes. I didn't take into account the power of the incoming tide that very day and it swept me past the beach and into the lagoon and washed me up on the wharf which was about five blocks from the beach in the center of town what, what could i do i just climbed out i straightened up i walked those five blocks naked as the day i was born and you know i i didn't make fig leaf hands not a soul who passed me on the street made a face it was just fine those were the days Boom. thank you nishama uh I'm just going to hold the damn mic. Is that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold the mic. I think you're going to have to tonight. Great job. Uh, great job, Nishama. Great job, all of our storytellers. We had 14 in total in round one. We will have six going to round two. Uh, the three storytellers from section four are all at or under time, <laughs> which makes me feel good. That's, that's good. So at this point, I'm going to ask you, co-host Queen Mary, Yes. To do what you do as well as anyone in the world and do summaries. And then we'll launch the final poll for now. You got it. So James had to cut his year of adventure short after college, but found out his dad stole his idea. Shweta had to take care of all kinds of stuff before she could find out that she was accepted at Brown University. And Nishama showed everybody what her mama gave her when she got washed up in a different place than where her clothes was and had to walk five blocks naked. All right. Uh, I think I've done a decent job here summarizing this. Let us have everybody here vote. Vote, 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 vote. All right, again, James Schwetter and Nishama. I'm launching poll. We have 38 people. Hope you all vote. Please do. Oof. This is an interesting. <laughs> now, Mary and Adi, I'm going to ask that you consider who you are going to put through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't say it out loud. I'm not. Do what you do. Do it on gender. And we are going to get together and confer. We have our four section winners, and I think we do have a winner for this section. Yep. Do. I'm going to close this. 
and you're going to add uh, a total of two storytellers, one each. Uh, but before then, Mary and Adi, I want to give you a moment. I want to thank both of you. And I want to ask oh. what you two are up to personally or professionally related to story or otherwise. We want to get to know who you are. Who are you, Mary? Well, I mean, you know, for everybody who listens to your podcast, they probably heard that I was on a very recent episode right, right, of Grits. Right. That's right. right. Yeah. Told a story about my gorgeous niece, Emily. So I understand the whole niece saving the day thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just doing my thing. I'm back on the radio in the Cayman Islands doing my mediumship work the last Friday of the month. So I'm very, very, very busy. All right. And Mr. Adi? Very cool. Uh Enjoying the storytelling circuit. Took some time off to uh, publish a book, which is almost completed. Um, we Wait, actually, what? actually, we actually sold the book over the summer, and now are creating the actual book now. So we used a Kickstarter kind of program for that, and the original plan was to like stitch these books together, and realized it makes a lot more sense to go to a publisher. So if anyone's ever thinking about physically making a book and you're not sure where to begin or you know which publishers take a cut and bigger cuts versus others and how you can do this yourself uh without using anyone else um you know let me know i hate gatekeepers and uh very excited to share uh any knowledge i've picked up thank you adi i what, what can you what's the book uh, it's called cheese dosa which is okay. also my website cheese and i'll put it in the chat yeah Fantastic. Um, Adi, in a moment, I'm going to, I messaged you, Adi, so have a look at uh, Messenger if you, if you don't mind. I'm just going to have a real quick plug, and then I'm actually going to give an opportunity, and, and just so you all know, before we announce who's going through, uh, it's going to take a few minutes, so if you haven't already, good time to get another drink, a smoke, use the bathroom real quick if you don't want to miss any of the action. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is just put in the chat here uh, a couple of links. Do with it what you want. One is the Facebook group where I house most of our events and classes and all this stuff. So you may be familiar, it's called Grit. And the other one is if anyone's here and they're like, man, I paid the five bucks, but this dude's worth like 150 bucks. It's that good. This is so good. I feel it's unfair that I only gave five bucks. Then, then there's a link to, to hook me up. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm so happy you're here. 150, Sean. You're lowballing yourself there. Yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, I've been humble. You're humble. You're humble. Right, you're right. <laughs> uh, and, and real quick, I want to give all of our storytellers an opportunity. And please do me a favor. It'll be easier if you do the little hand thing. You know, the little hand thing and the reactions. Put your hand up if you have a quick plug you want to make. I say, you know what, like, look, they're, they're telling stories. What are you doing? Not, not a list of things. Just pick one thing that you're producing or you're telling at, uh, or you're involved in. Put your hand up. I'll pick you. I'll say unmute, and you can let us know. And Perky, unmute. And, and one thing in. Okay. Story Jam, Blowout, October 7th. I'm producing it. Wow. All right, so story. if you Google Story Jam, you'll find it. Okay, other hands up. I don't see any other hands up. We got 14 tellers. You're not doing anything? Uh, 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 Tracy, then I'll get to you, Raphael. Tracy, then Raphael, and then Jay. Hi, I'm going to be on, uh, but that's another story, June 6th. Nice. That is concise. Raphael. Rafael, you gotta unmute yourself. Hang on, unmute and then start over. So sorry about that. No problem. Uh, I wanna let every, since Father's Day is coming, I wanna let everybody know about my Father's Day book that I've written, Father's Day Encounters with Everyday Life, makes a great gift. I will put my, um, my email in the chat and I will also put my uh, Amazon author page. Okay, great. And just remember, these, the chat gets filled very quickly and it starts flying up. So uh, if you have an interest in what anyone's doing and you want the link, maybe copy it and just paste it somewhere or open mm -hmm. up the window now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a way to download the chat, but that gets complicated. Uh, I see Tori's hands up and also Jay's, I believe. Tori and then Jay. Great. 
Um, hi, so I produced a show called Mashed Poetatoes. It's a mashup of slam poetry and improv comedy, uh, where we do like improv scenes inspired by poetry. And then I write a poem during the show inspired by all of it. Uh, so our next show is this coming Saturday, May 22nd. So I'll post a link to my uh, Facebook page if you're interested, please do check it out. It's a lot of fun. Fantastic, thank you, Tori. And I think Richard. Oh, <clears throat> I um, because okay. of this 99, I I think uh, this week coming up, I'm on the Risk podcast. They have these things called uh, anecdotes. And so I took one of the 99s from this particular uh, slam and, and uh, submitted it. And it's on this week's podcast coming up. Fantastic. Nice. And good segue to Jay, who I think was just on risk as well. Jay? Uh, yes, it was. Um, it was a great time. Uh, I am going to be uh, sort of like a featured teller, something to that effect, on uh, Story Lux Workshop Workshop, a uh, sort of a storytelling practice situation. Yeah, uh, Dan. And uh, I'll just put a link with some more information there. I think I did that right. And yeah, wow, that's a that was big. not right. That was <laughs> ignore Jay's link. That thing is beast. That's from like oh. 1997. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, story luck on Facebook. Uh, look it up and uh, come by tomorrow. Cool. And I, the only other thing I'll say if you want to uh, slam with us, we do this every three to four weeks. So it is going to change probably because look, things are changing, uh, but I want to keep doing this. Uh, Mary does too. I yeah. think, I hope. I do. I do. Um, please unmute yourself and say something if I didn't call on you and you raised your hand, I apologize for that. We're gonna keep doing that. We also have events, uh, particularly uh, something called The Flash, which is improv and story. Uh, and we have something called The Mental Health Happiest Hour, which is exactly what it sounds like. So mental health centered stories, we sort of rotate them every three or four weeks. So if you're interested in any of them, we'd love to see you. Um, yeah, that's that, right? That's that. Other than that, you know? Yeah. What are you pickleball this weekend, by the way. You got what? I got involved with pickleball in the last few days. How was that? Phenomenal. Oh. That's why I'm like a lobster. Yeah, I was gonna say you're very uh you you've got some color. Nobody can nobody really wants to hear about my pickleball and my culinary. Are you uh, sure? Not really. They don't get the See, shit. look, Andrew's saying pickleball is great. See? Yeah, he just wants votes. That's all he wants. Do you think that's what he's doing? He's soliciting votes. <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, Jeremy, I have no power, y'all. It was four people who won each poll and then uh, two sort of wild card votes, we'll call them. I'm going to announce the six names and then they're going to go back in the hat so we can reorder them. We're going to have one final section, uh, one final poll and a winner who's going to make money. Money, money. For those of you that don't go through, stay with us. Please. We want you to be here. We want you to hear the stories. We want you to vote. Uh, if you're bitter and angry, stay on afterwards and then you can vent at me, but not just now. Fair, Mary? I think that's fair. Fair. You can vent at me afterwards, afterwards. but for now, just hang. All right. Uh, in no particular order, we have going through to the second round, six names, and they are Godav in Norway, James in Chicago, Tori in Pittsburgh. You know, I love the, the locations, Mary, right? Yeah, I know. That's, we got to keep you know, it on. We've got Jay, also in Chicago, like James. We've got Nishama in California. And finally, we've got Richard in the great state of Nevada. So again, I'm going to put those names in the hat. I'm going to mix them up. Then you're going to tell your second story. And the exact same rules. However, you can't tell us the same story, right? right? Nope. And if you've been on the slam before, and many of them have been, you're not supposed to tell a story you've ever told at this slam. I don't care what you've done elsewhere. And there are some stories that might be like, all right, similar events, but maybe a different story. So if it's clearly obvious, I'm gonna, we're just, we're just not gonna put you on the poll, but I don't think anybody's gonna do that. No, not this group. These are they're, for, they're just not going to do that. So not. I'm mixing it up. And the Peruvian hat. This one, just so it's very clear, uh, audience votes the winner. We're done. Mm -hmm. 
and then we'll go home and I'll say good night and I'll thank everybody. And, but then we'll hang out a little bit and have a yeah. post slam talk or Q and A or whatever. And that's the moment people can vent. Right. But they won't. Right? And they might, it's okay. I would be a little upset, but hey, first up. Interestingly, this young lady was last to go in the first round. She's first to go in the second round. Nishama, break a leg. Okay. So there we were in ICU and my husband, John was on a ventilator and uh, he had a bad lung disease and there was no remedy. And I was a lousy nurse and he would have made a miserable invalid. So it, it was time, it was time. We had to make one of those decisions when to unplug him. And we decided Friday morning so he could be surrounded by family as they say in the obituaries. But my husband was a very private, sensitive man. He had his own sense of timing. So there I was and my hands were on his torso on Thursday night and I actually felt it. I felt a leap and I knew it was his soul leaving that body that no longer served him. And at that moment, I seemed to fall into the cosmos and I got both huge and tiny at the same time. And then it was all over and he was dead and I had to see what it was like to live on my own for the first time in my whole life. And this is what I discovered when the weight of loving someone for whom life is so hard, he's so sensitive, is lifted. I had all this energy in addition to the grief, I had the energy to pursue storytelling, to be with my grandchildren, to go hiking, to be dancing. I stepped into the second half of my life as an independent creative woman. It was, you could say, another gift from John. Thank you, Nishama. Thank you very much. That is her second round story, Nishama Franklin in Northern California, Mary. Yes. yes. Hmm. Uh, and as the tellers and everyone may have noticed uh, that we are not saying the names in advance. So it is going to be uh, one name at a time. Nisham is done. We've got five more. Let's just get with it. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Next up, going uh, east, east from west coast to east ish coast. <laughs> Let's find. It's not really east coast, but you know what I'm saying. There she is. Let me spotlight you, Tori. Take your time. So I'm 29 years old. I'm a grad student living in New York City, and tonight is my night off. It's a special night because I have all of these friends visiting from out of state. We hardly ever get that many people together at once. And the Allman Brothers are playing a sold out show at the Beacon Theater. Special guest for tonight, David Crosby. I love David Crosby. And me and my friends, we rage this concert. So it's like after the last song, I'm walking out of the theater and right there on Beacon Street, there's a stretch limousine and the chauffeur is holding a sign, David Crosby. I'm feeling bold. So I walk right up to the chauffeur. I look him in the eye and I say, I'm with David. And he nods, it opens up the door. So I get into the limo. He closes the door behind me and now I, I'm in Dave Crosby's limo by myself. And the show just ended, the band is still backstage. So my friends, they all head to this Irish pub on the corner and I decide I'm gonna stay in the limo. Right, I mean, meeting David Crosby, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? So I'm waiting and my friends, they keep texting me from the bar. Like, where are you? It's like a family reunion. They are having so much fun, but I am determined. I'm gonna make the most out of this night. So I step out of the limo. I join my friends at the Irish pub. And that night I have the time of my life. Boom. Thank you, Tori in Pittsburgh. All right, Mary. So we are going to have a total of 20 stories this evening, right? 14 plus six. Uh, you've heard 16 of them so far. Yeah. 
which yeah. is just adding to the library of 99 second stories that we've amassed since, since what August. Yeah, it's tremendous. It Incredible. really is tremendous. Very good. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in about 15 minutes, maybe even more like 10 minutes, mm -hmm. we're going to have a winner. Yeah. Another winner. Another maybe a repeat winner. I don't know if we've had a repeat winner, but maybe we will. Maybe we will. Tonight. Possible. Not going to give names, but there's one or two people here who have won. Uh, so, you know, yeah, that's surprising, right? I mean, next mm -hmm. up. Go ahead, show us. Ooh. We're going back west a little bit. Uh, his name is James. He snaps at us. It's fine. We love double it. Snap. Double snap. Double snap. <laughs> the double snap is fine, James. No, it might be a new trend, James. Yes. I'm having lunch with a woman at her invitation. She says, I know something about you. I can't tell you I've taken a vow of secrecy. If it's about me, don't I already know it? She pauses and says, you like rough sex. You like to leave marks. This has happened to me before. Uh, I'm an editor at Playboy magazine. I'm single. I write a column on sex. I talk to women about sex. Women talk to me about sex. And women apparently talk to women about sex and me. Every now and then someone passes through my life who has a fantasy they want to explore. They think because of my job, I've done everything. They're mistaken, but hey. Uh, in this case, though, the woman we're talking about had skin as delicate as an orchid. If you breathed on it, it bruised. Once I discovered that, we were, what we did defined tenderness. But before that, well, I'm sorry, hickeys are not evidence of rough sex. I didn't tell my lunch companion that because a gentleman does not discuss his lovers. But I realized during the course of that lunch that I could no longer date people locally. Chicago was high school with high rises. And if I wanted to maintain privacy, a sense of privacy, I would have to look elsewhere. Milwaukee might work. Boom. Thank you, uh, James. He went, with the, he went with the boom. All right, he went with the boom. You know, sometimes he snaps, sometimes he boom. It's all good. I missed the double snap. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, time, it good. will be back. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> we want the double snap back. We do. Right. We do. Three down, three to go. Right. Uh, check out the chat. People are sending things and saying things and love mostly, mostly nice things. They're waiting for the bad things after. It's going to be directed at me. I think so. You son of a gun. Uh, here we go. I am not doing it. Nope. No one gets favorite. Nope. nope. Uh, here we go. Uh, no one has a favorite. We're going way across the pond to Oslo. Uh, go to have, un, uh, mute yourself. I'll spotlight you and take your time, sir. It's a freezing November morning in the city of New Delhi in India. And wrapped in a thin white cloth, I'm staring at a massive simmering fire with no expressions, holding my brother's hand firmly. Suddenly an old man marches onto me, taps on my back and hands me a wooden spear and goes, strike here with force while pointing at the fire. In the fire lies my mother. A shiver runs through my body I look down, close my eyes, and like a movie looped in fast forward, I see myself walking with her in my home two nights ago. I also see myself sleeping in her lap, and then I see her sleeping in my lap. I see her walking with me in hills, and I'm scared of looking down at the river. She immediately hides me in her arm, hugs me tight, keeping me safe and protected. After a long thought, I open my eyes look up in the fire and follow what the old man, the priest, says. I shuffle the spear in my hand, pull its entire length back and strike to rip open her skull, to allow her a safe passage 
to a boards of gods as a ritual thank you all right gorov thanks man mary have you ever met anyone who resided in uh, norway no i have not but now i have the first for you huh yeah it's a first it's not like I'm some international trailblazer here. I just may have met one or two people who are Norwegian. But I like that. And I want to ask Adi real quick. Adi, uh, have you ever met an Osloian? No. All right. There we go. It's great that we're meeting new people. Isn't it? And different countries, different places. And I don't need to know what someone from Oslo is called, but I'm going to say they're an Osloian. Why not? <laughs> What's wrong with that? But there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Adi's, think... Adi, Adi's face said it all. I, yeah. just... <laughs> well, I if, you, if you're it. wrong about that, you can just say, well, well maybe I'm just being a little off slow. <laughs> oh, God. That's why we brought him in. That's right? It. That's the moment. That's, that That's the reason. All right, That's great. It. That's it. There's always a moment you're like, I'm not sure if this was working out. And then, and then, yeah. then it is. And then it is. If I've offended, right. a, if I've offended a number of groups there, just remember I intend on going straight to hell, and I apologize. Yeah, okay. Yep. I'll meet you I'm, there. I'm just waiting for him to make sure he's done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next up, uh, a second to last teller this evening. It's been great. All right, first of all, super sincere thanks to our tellers, Queen Mary, Adi, uh, and everyone who showed up. I appreciate it. And most, almost everyone who started is still here, which uh, I appreciate. So next much. up. Uh, the Badlands of Nevada, Las Vegas, Richard Munchkin. I am on the ha top of Half Dome in Yosemite National Park, and I'm setting up a tent, and my buddy David suddenly starts yelling and screaming, and he's banging pots and pans together, and I look up, and there is a freaking bear like 50 feet away from our campsite and I start yelling and screaming because what they tell you to do is if you see a bear you get as big as you can and you make as much noise as you can and the bear kind of shrugs and turns around and ambles away now the other thing they tell you is you absolutely never put any food inside your tent. So we do what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to hang your food from a branch that's too high for a bear to reach it, but it's too uh, brittle for a bear to walk out on the branch. And so we hang our food up there. And that night, we're sleeping in the tent, and every time I hear any noise, a twig break, I'm like, David, David, there's a bear outside the tent. And he says, there's no bear, just go back to sleep. I don't sleep at all that night. And we wake up the next morning, and we go outside the tent, and there is a line for 50 feet long of all of our food spread out that the bear has got, and he has eaten everything except the powdered eggs which even a bear won't eat that shit <laughs> thank you richard thank you richard munchkin we've got one one teller left uh he knows who he is he sure does uh, he's impatient and by the way queen mary and adi i'm going to um uh take your duties away as co-host so that you can vote Ooh. fair i'm gonna do that right now jay's we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna find Jay in just a moment, but I just feel like I just feel like uh, you should vote. I feel like you should have a vote. Okay. And so uh, let me know if that works, and I will be the only person who doesn't vote. That's fine. I will vote. I just want to max out the votes, and uh, you know we're we're all about inclusivity. It's so fun. So I might even say love, but not me. Yeah, no, no, I know I you're. I just, I just, I'm not the guy to use that four letter no, word. No, no. Final teller of season four, Slam One, Jay Roar. Where is he? There he is. All right, Jay, whenever you're ready, bro. When my mom was dying of cancer, I had no idea that one day that would result in my ability to save someone's life. Specifically, what came down to was an incident. We were the only two people at home, and I was up on the second story of the house, 
and uh, I heard her trying to come up the stairs. At this point, she'd been so eaten alive by cancer that she couldn't carry herself up and she started calling for help, which was even difficult in and of itself. She couldn't catch her breath at all. And so I went downstairs and a lot of people, they know me as the doughy Hercules that I am now. But at the time I was just a very skinny, small little kid. And I didn't have the strength to really help her up the stairs, but we struggled together and I was able to get her into bed. But it was such an exhausting and for her an embarrassing and frustrating experience. And it made me feel terrible that I wasn't able to help her. Then afterwards I started using my brother's weight set and started lifting. Um, and long after she passed away, uh, I had sort of inflated, for lack of a better term, into somebody that could carry a refrigerator upstairs by himself. And that's why down the line, without realizing it, trying to sort of in the back of my mind make up for the fact that I wasn't strong enough to help my mother when she needed it, I was able to reach out with one arm and pull my fiance out of the way of a drunk driver careening down the road. Thank you. Boom. Thanks, Jay. Jay is the final storyteller this evening. His background has not changed one iota. No. But most people's haven't. I mean, look behind me. You just got some crappy wood. Uh, Mary, I've got good news. You've got good news. Tonight. Very good news. Of all the six that told, not one went over. Six summaries. Uh, and then we will have a vote and we will have season four, slam number one, winner. Whenever you're ready, Queen Mary. I, I will do that. You may want to unspotlight Jay. All right. That, you know I what? don't have that power. Oh, you don't have the ability. I know. To take do your it. powers and Addy's powers away. Only, so we only can... for the greater good though, right? I, I agree. I agree. All right. All right. All right. Whenever you're ready. Here we go. So Nishama was given a gift by her husband to live out the second half of her life with a ton of energy and living alone for the first time. Tori was a grad student in New York City. And even though she had a chance to meet David Crosby, she had the time of her life with her friends at an Irish pub around the corner. James, I, I loved the high school with high rises and he had to find someone who wasn't so close to home because his reputation sometimes preceded him and not in a good way and not always true. Um, Goroff had uh, to participate in a ritual for mom so she would have safe travel to the gods. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard had a bear encounter while camping and lost all of his food. And Jay was able to save someone's life, his fiance's, when at the time previously he wasn't able to help mom. Putting some keywords in here, help me out with. Uh, for all of them, it's very clear. Would you give me one or two keywords for James's story so it's super clear to the people that are voting? Um, I would say uh, lunch and let's see. James, right? Yeah. 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 So he had lunch with the woman at her invitation, and then there was a discussion about what people heard about him. So rumors, maybe? Lunch and rumors. Great. And, rumors. and they've heard the story and they've heard yeah. the story. So it's clear. All right. This is it. Uh, right. Before we launch this poll, you know that I never want to sound trite, right? Never. But uh, I am so grateful that everyone showed up and became the tellers. Of course, you and Adi and everybody who supported. However you came to be here this evening with us, thank you. And I hope you come back when there are future slams and there will be more slams. And I would love the more and more people to slam with us. Yes. You can do this. Yes. Bring your friends. Bring your enemies. Bring, bring your friends. friends. And uh, all right, Nishama, Tori, James, Gorav, Richard, and Jay, we are launching this poll. Let us find ourselves a winner. 36 people could vote, and it's going to be close. I know it. All right. Wow, this is incredibly close. Oh. I'm the only person who can see this, right? I know, yeah. So I can just milk this shit out of this. Oh, it's incredibly close. So unfair. He's gone full milk, Queen Mary. All right. So yes. This is unbelievable. I'm not being it. We've got uh, one person who could vote, and that vote could make a difference. Oh, vote. Just so you know, and Quit. I didn't say this in advance, 
if there's a tie, we're not doing a runoff or a second vote. They're just going to split it. There's going to be a tie. That sounds great. That's one way to do it. I didn't say it in advance, so I apologize, but that's what I, we've always done. Right now, it's a two-person race. There is one person who has not voted, and I'm going to give it another... I'm going to milk this another 20 seconds. Okay. And let us see if this person shows up and maybe it'll make a difference. Is, is your mic back together, Sean? It's yeah, not- for now. I'm probably going to throw you. it out of my window right when we're done. That sounds good. Across the woods and stamp on it and break it with a bat. But not yet. Not let yet. us close this poll. We have a winner by one vote. Wow. So the lesson there is vote. Oh, 35 of 36. They voted. Mary, Adi, anyone else? Do I need anything I need to say before I announce the winner? And I can't ask Mary, who usually does it, because she doesn't know. I don't know. But I will cheer loudly for whoever it is. I will tell you that. Absolutely. Great job, tellers. Thank you, audience. And and after I announce the winner, uh, we'll hang out. Uh, and we will f- formally close the evening, but then we'll hang out. And if you want to talk, chat, vent, yeah. whatever it is, we usually do that for a little bit. So our winner this evening uh, of Slam 4, look at Mary, she's waiting for it. Slam number one has won before. She's in Pittsburgh. Her name is Tori Shine. Victoria, Woo! well done. Boom, boom, boom. Yay, Tori. Thank you. She eats out a win and she takes home the dough. Yay. Great job, Tori. Thank you to Addy and to Queen Mary and everybody else. And if you want to hang out, we talk shop, we shoot the shit, and uh, that's that. But let's formally say goodbye. Thank you all very much. Sincerely, uh, great job. And I hope to see you soon, whether it's at a slam or somewhere else in the story world or on the pickleball court. Uh, Let's hang. All right, y'all. Take care.